present year the vice president of the Hamilton Naturalist Club, which was initially founded in 1919 as the Hamilton Bird Protection Society. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Well, right where we're standing here at Coots Paradise, like you said, back in 1919, the Bird Protection Society was lobbying the local government to ensure that this wetland was not infilled or built upon, um, that it was so ecologically important that it remain unscathed as much as possible. Uh, and sure enough, that, that pressure, that, those conversations, that group of volunteers did exactly what they intended to do and have then protected this wetland for uh, over the last 100 years, which has been incredible. The Bird Protection Society then became the Hamilton Naturalist Club. This property and the properties around it slowly became Royal Botanical Gardens or City of Hamilton. Um, and since then, the Naturalist Club has grown and grown and grown. Um, we've purchased, we maintain about 11 properties around Southern Ontario, not all just in the Hamilton area, but areas that we know will be protected forever. We know that as development occurs, it's, it's harder and harder to protect land. So the land that has been purchased, the land that we are purchasing and want to continue to purchase is stuff that will be just that there for generations to come. They may not have trails on them, but that's the point. Nature needs places where maybe people aren't. Um, the Naturalist Club is, we've got hundreds of members, we've got dozens and dozens of volunteers. We're always asking for more and we always need more help. Um, but we're split into several different kind of factions or wings, if you will, just so that we've got something for everybody. We don't want nature to be exclusive to anybody. We are to be included in all of this. This is part of us. We are part of it. So we want to ensure that if someone has an interest in nature, they're coming to the HNC and we're helping point them in the right direction. Birds is but a component, although a major component. Um, the Naturalist Club got so big and popular into birds that they created the bird study group. And it's a wing of the HNC that meets once a month indoors or over Zoom during COVID. But it was a place where birders can come indoors, learn from birders in the community, uh, and then learn about what's going on that they can get th themselves involved with. So um, there's invasive species removals, there's native tree plantings, there's butterfly and dragonfly counts, you name it. And we, we want to get more people outside experiencing it because I think, and I think it's been said, once you're out here and you're seeing and smelling and observing and, and embracing nature, you do want to do more for it. And now more than ever, we need people getting involved with nature. So hopefully the Naturalist Club is a spot where, where people can do that. So the agency goes about protecting a lot of different land and there's so many things that they do on a large level. I was wondering if we could talk on a smaller level though, what can people do at home specifically to protect birds? Great question. And there's lots of things people can do in their home to protect birds. Um, starting with recognizing what's on their property. So if you're lucky enough to have a patch of grass, uh, a yard, are you able to put plants or trees in that yard? Are you able to provide any sort of water? Anything you can do to create habitat is amazing. Um, so you can go to local nurseries and ask for native shrubs, trees, flowers, you name it, and put them in your garden spaces or on your balcony. Another is, have you ever had a bird hit a window before? You might want to treat your windows with some bird-friendly decals. Bird-safe windows are are something that almost anyone can do, especially if you've ever had one bird hit one of your windows. Um, another thing, if you are a cat owner, keep your cats indoors, don't let your cats outside. And if you do, put them on a leash, put them on a catio. Um, and then anytime any sort of group is asking for a shoreline cleanup, a litter pick, an invasive plant removal, a native plant planting, uh, a lecture, a meeting, go to those things. Go, go with a friend, go with a family member and just be part of it. Go get your hands dirty, go fill your brain with knowledge. You can be brand new at it. You don't have to know anything or you can be the world's leading expert. Get out there and just go give back, go deliver or go absorb because those are ways that just being present helps reinforce those organizations that they're doing something meaningful and that it shows other people like, look how many folks came out to something like this. This is a movement, this is empowering, and that will just kind of snowball from there. Incredible, there's so many different ways we can protect nature, even from the safety of our own homes. I was wondering if you had a fun nature story to share with us. Yeah, you bet. Uh, and it actually took place right here at Princess Point. So a couple months ago, 
Uh, I came here on a hike with my family, my niece and nephew, and we were kind of walking around. And my one niece particularly is huge into raptors. And she's like, Uncle Jackson, Uncle Jackson, look, there's a red-tailed hawk. And I was like, oh, cool. And sure enough, it was circling around. She goes, oh, I bet you it's going to catch something to eat. So we continue our walk. And sure enough, she sees the hawk flying back at us. And she's like, it's got something in its talons. And it landed in a tree. We were able to walk close enough without disturbing it. Because again, a lot of times with optics and things, we want to see things from afar so we don't disturb wildlife. Um, so we, we get to a spot where we can see it. Sure enough, it's got a pigeon and it's just sitting on a, on the branch and it's just holding on to the pigeon and, and it's just waiting. It's kind of waiting for us to back away. So we take a quick look at it. I look in the binoculars and on the foot of the pigeon is a tag. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a banded bird. I bet you it's like a racing pigeon. Follow up the next morning. My family wants to go back because they saw something else that they really liked here. So we came back here the next morning. Didn't we find the, uh, the kill site of the pigeon, a whole cluster of feathers, and there was the talon with the band on it that that pigeon came from, like the Canadian Racing Pigeons Union. And I was able to let them know that I found a deceased pigeon. I shared an image of that hawk, that red-tailed hawk with a friend of mine, who he guessed it was a first-year bird. For a first-year red-tailed hawk to catch something as fast as a racing pigeon is a good sign that that hawk is going to do just fine. And now I've got the talon to prove it.